Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many of my longtime subscribers here on YouTube may have noticed that whenever I make a video involving fighters of different races and nationalities, and it's a big fight, there'll be several comments pertaining to the different nationalities of the fighters left in the comment section by YouTube viewers, right? Occasionally I'll hear that I always pick the black guy or I always pick the American, right? The inference is that I'm somehow biased and, um, you know, that I have a strong racial preference for one of the combatants, right? Sometimes the posts are just outright racist and they'll say, well, you know, I'm going with the black guy or I'm going with the Filipino guy because Filipinos are fill in the blank, right? The viewer will think they're enlightened and they'll leave some racially tinged comment. I'll say this, just to understand that the sentiment is out there and it's so strong that people feel compelled to leave the messages here on YouTube in the comment section. Well, let me just point out that if you're one of these people in the casino trying to figure out who to bet on and the idea of race crosses your mind, if you're one of these people who thinks in terms of white, black, and brown rather than green, and if you're wondering, you know, who is the Latino in this fight? Who's the black guy in this fight? Who's the white guy in this fight? Then you are missing one of the biggest lessons of the sport of boxing. And that lesson is simply that talent is universal and colorblind, right? Let me point out that the image that you have of many of these fighters, particularly the racial image, that you have of many of these fighters is simply wrong, right? Once you look under the hood, you're going to see that the sport is so diverse and it's so multicultural that it's really crazy to think about a fighter as having a boxing style based on race. For example, let's look at Sergei Kovalev. He's making a lot of noise. He's knocking a lot of people out. He's one of the champions at 175 pounds, right? He's a white guy, but his corner is black. His trainer is John David Jackson. If I asked, who's the white guy in the fight, right? Just understand that Sergei Kovalev's approach to boxing is multicultural, right? Vladimir Klitschko, his trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, is no longer with us. But understand that Vladimir Klitschko currently trains with Jonathan Banks. Right there again. You know, Vladimir Klitschko, quite frankly, should be viewed multiculturally. Let's go one step further. Vladimir Klitschko has trained with sparring partners of all races. Right, understand, he's been in the ring with guys like Deontay Wilder and Steve Cunningham in preparing for fights. Again, you can't look at a fighter and just reach the conclusion that he's fighting according to the color of his skin. The preparation is much more multicultural than that. So, for example, when Manny Pacquiao fought Timothy Bradley, there were many comments, they're still up, the video's still up, the comments are there. There were many comments that I was taking the black guy in that fight. Right, Timothy Bradley, because he's black. But again, let's look under the hood at the fight. Understand that Manny Pacquiao, a Filipino icon, 
as a white trainer, Freddie Roach. Understand that Timothy Bradley, who I hear here online, has a black style, actually has a Latino trainer, Juan Diaz, right? And so, excuse me, Joel Diaz. And so my point is, in that fight, what you have really is a multicultural event. You don't have a Filipino fighter against a black fighter. You have two different camps, and they're multicultural. Understand, too, Ray Beltran, who, in my opinion, just beat Ricky Burns, has been one of Manny Pacquiao's main sparring partners. Right? Ray Beltran is Latino. Understand, Manny Pacquiao has also sparred with Kareem Mayfield, an African-American. Right? The point is, when you look at Manny Pacquiao, understand that some of the key members of his team are different races. Right? For this, Floyd Mayweather, Saul Alvarez fight. I know Oscar De La Hoya has been, you know, talking up Mexican boxing. And I know Oscar is, you know, with his promoter's hat on, is trying to drum up support for the fight, and is trying to do so along cultural lines. But understand, Oscar De La Hoya used to be trained by Freddie Roach. That's one of the stories, by the way, in the famous Oscar De La Hoya Manny Pacquiao fight. Because, of course, it was Oscar's former trainer, Freddie Roach, who had left De La Hoya and who was in Manny Pacquiao's corner, who was actually giving Pacquiao insights on his former fighter. But let's look more closely at Oscar. Understand that Oscar was also trained by Floyd's father, Floyd Mayweather. So when you look at Oscar, he's not just a fighter with a Latino heritage. In boxing, his team's actually much more multicultural, right? His past features both a black and both a white, and of course, he also has Latino trainers in his past. So for all the talk of Mexican boxing, understand Oscar's own background is very multicultural. If I asked you to name me, let's say the blackest fighter in history or you know a black icon in history, some of you may well name Muhammad Ali. Just understand Muhammad Ali's trainer for many, many years, was Italian Angelo Dundee, right? You shouldn't buy into racial politics or race-based analysis of the sport, right? Boxing was integrated well before many of these other sports, right? Jack Johnson was heavyweight champion well before Jackie Robinson integrated the major leagues. Right, And you need to realize that these guys, in preparing for fights, fought guys of different races and had guys in their management team of different races. Right, Jack Dempsey, look into his past. There was a period there where his main sparring partner was African American. Right, Don't think in terms of black, white, and brown. Think in terms of green. That's the goal here. If I'm picking a fighter in a fight, just rest assured that I haven't spent two seconds of my time worried about that fighter's racial background. Let me go one step further. The entire idea of race changes from country to country, right? Folks need to realize that some people who would be viewed as minorities in Brazil excuse me, some people who would be viewed in the majority in Brazil would be viewed as minorities here in the United States, right? If you have some static view of race, you're woefully out of place supplying it to an international sport like boxing. Let me also say too, that don't assume that you know the fighters. I know there are many fighters out there who look like they come from, you know, privileged backgrounds. 
and that the guy has always been a champion and has always been on the French Riviera. Regardless of race, you need to realize that many of these fighters come from abject poverty. You can't look at a guy, see how polished he is today. Look at the end result of years of struggle. Look at the guy on the top of the mountain and know where that guy is from or how that guy sees himself, right? I'm just here to tell you that there are champions out there who you think, you know, have always been privileged, have always been multimillionaires, who have literally come up the hard way, have been homeless, have been digging through trash dumpsters for food. How do I know this? Some of the fighters themselves in interviews have talked about it. You know, all we're seeing now is the fighter at the pinnacle of his career. Don't assume that you know the fighter's socioeconomic backgrounds, right? So all of that said, this Floyd Mayweather, Saul Alvarez fight, now is less than a week away, right? I've read the comments here online. I've learned a lot. Let's talk about some of the assumptions on the fight. And for the record, I think Floyd Mayweather wins the fight. To answer some of the inquiries here online, I do feel that this fight might well be Floyd's fight against Arturo Gotti, where he destroyed Gotti in the middle rounds of the fight and got Gotti to quit on his stool. Understand, that's what speed does to an opponent who doesn't have a lot of it, right? Floyd Mayweather, excuse me, let me back up a bit. Sonny Liston lost his belt sitting on his stool in his corner. Decided he couldn't continue against Ali. Let's go further. Oscar De La Hoya got beaten by Manny Pacquiao, sitting down in his corner. He realized the speed was just too much. If Floyd Mayweather opens up the medicine cabinet on Saul Alvarez, and Alvarez realizes that he can't hit Floyd, and he's getting hit with a bevy of punches, don't be surprised if he or his corner pulls the plug in the middle of this fight. Wouldn't be the first time it's happened with Mayweather. Understand, Diego Corrales was so overwhelmed, his father pulled the plug on the fight from the corner. Right? Now, let's talk about Saul Alvarez. I think Floyd wins the fight. I do think there is a chance of Floyd by stoppage. Let's talk about the fight. The Canelo arguments center on three things. Youth, Canelo's much younger than Floyd Mayweather. Size, Canelo is probably going to outweigh Floyd significantly in the fight. Understand, Floyd Mayweather, in his two fights at 154, and yes, that's how few it's been. Right against Oscar De La Hoya and Miguel Cotto has never come in weighing more than 151 pounds. Saul Alvarez came in weighing about 172 pounds when he fought Austin Trout. Right, so understand Saul Alvarez is going to come in with a huge weight advantage. Right, also power. Saul Alvarez, at least to these two eyes, is one of the hardest punchers in the sport of boxing pound for pound. He hits harder than Floyd Mayweather, right? The theory is simply that Mayweather doesn't have a comfortable margin of error should he get hit with a bomb from Saul Alvarez as he got hit with a bomb from Shane Mosley. Let's break down each of these. First, the youth argument. You know what? Between these two fighters, it's no contest. Floyd Mayweather has much better stamina. 
you know, the youth argument to me is really a proxy for saying that a guy is more physically resilient. We know who's more physically resilient here. It's Floyd Mayweather. It's not Saul Alvarez. Floyd's going to be the person in better shape. Saul Alvarez right now, as I make this video on the 9th of September, is probably out there trying to lose weight to make weight. Right? He's the one with the yo-yo diet. He's the one, quite frankly, in the weaker physical condition, right? You can't use youth as an argument when the fighter himself is not in the physical shape of his older opponent. Let's talk size. In boxing, they've long said for generations well before me that a good big man beats a good little man. Right? That's the argument. But would it surprise you to know that between these two guys, Floyd Mayweather actually has the longer reach? Did you know that only one inch separates these two guys height-wise? Alvarez is 5'9", Mayweather's 5'8". Who's the good big man in this fight? Just food for thought. Folks, this isn't a heavyweight fight. This is a fight at 154. You don't have a 10-inch size advantage with any guy. This isn't some tall guy. This isn't Vladimir Klitschko fighting Eddie Chambers. These guys, dimension-wise, are roughly the same size. I'll agree there's a big weight gap. No question about it. But dimension-wise, these guys are the same size. Let's also talk about the weight gap. You know what, if Floyd Mayweather wasn't a guy who liked to have you be the aggressor, have you come to him, if Floyd wasn't comfortable leaning on the ropes, picking off your shots, hitting you with check left hooks and other punches, then maybe the weight would matter. But isn't Floyd a defensive genius who actually wants you coming forward and trying to use your weight? Isn't that who Floyd is? Also, when's the last Canelo fight you saw where Canelo was leaning on guys, making sure that the guy felt his weight? I thought Canelo was a guy who liked to operate behind a jab. I thought the story of the Austin Trout fight was how good Canelo could fight on his back foot, right? I don't think Canelo really makes his size an issue. He's not James Kirkland. He's not pinning you with a shoulder and leaning on you. That's not his style. So I would say the size gap's a little bit overrated, especially since, again, Floyd has the longer reach. Let's talk about the power gap. Just understand, there is a guy who fought both of these guys, Shane Mosley. Would it surprise you to know that Shane Mosley feels that these guys both hit about the same? Right? Why? Because while Canelo might hit harder in the abstract, Floyd's punches have the bigger element of surprise. They catch you when you're unprepared. Those shots for which you're unprepared might actually hurt more. I think the power gap between these two is not as wide as people think. Just ask yourself, and I know it was a weird ending, but just ask yourself. Didn't Victor Ortiz look hurt when he got knocked down by Floyd Mayweather? Didn't he get hit with something in that fight? Right? Just food for thought. Right? Well, as I see it, youth size and power in any event don't dominate when there's a gap between skills, speed and quickness, and stamina. Let's talk about the skill gap. I think it's sizable in this fight. First, Floyd Mayweather can fight inside. 
fights inside much better than Saul Alvarez. I know there are moments where Austin Trout steps forward and Saul Alvarez backs up to the ropes and is able to defend himself. Is there anyone watching this video who feels that he does that better than Floyd Mayweather? Is there anyone in the sport of boxing who can defend himself better in close quarters than Floyd Mayweather? I think Floyd Mayweather can fight inside better than Saul Alvarez. I think Floyd Mayweather is a better defensive fighter than Saul Alvarez. I think Floyd Mayweather uses movement to move around the ring better than Saul Alvarez. Those are all skills. In my opinion, that's pronounced, right? There's a skill gap in this fight, and the skills, quite frankly, favor Floyd Mayweather. Let's talk about speed and quickness. You know what? Canelo isn't slow. He isn't. He actually has decent speed and quickness. But he's slow compared to Floyd Mayweather. Right? There's an interview. I've linked it to my channel page. It's a video. I, I believe it's done by Ellie Setback. Excellent reporter. I follow Ellie Setback's stuff all the time. And I believe he's interviewing Manny Pacquiao. And they asked Pacquiao about this fight. Now understand, when you're talking about speed, when you're talking about a guy with hand speed, that's Manny Pacquiao, right? Manny Pacquiao has never had to worry about hand speed in a fight. He's always competitive. He has some of the fastest hands in the sport of boxing. So it was interesting to hear Manny Pacquiao and talking about this fight, saying, look, Saul Alvarez <laughs> needs to be concerned about the speed, right? Alvarez needs to work on his speed because Manny Pacquiao, a guy with hand speed, understood looking at films that Saul Alvarez doesn't have the hand speed of Floyd Mayweather. Understand, too, that hand speed, a little bit different than quickness, right? Think of quickness as reaction time, right? See a hole, hit the hole, right? How fast can you react to openings? Floyd Mayweather is blindingly fast reacting to openings. I don't believe Saul Alvarez can match him in quickness, right? Let's go one step further. I mentioned this before. Stamina. I don't believe it's close. Many people out there, many, Leo Santa Cruz, quite frankly, one of the very best fighters, pound for pound, in the sport of boxing, right? One of the dominant performances I've seen this year, and I mean one of the very dominant performances, was Leo Santa Cruz's last fight against Victor Terrazas, right? If I had a better game, I would have made a post-fight interview immediately. I was very impressed with Leo Santa Cruz. I don't see anybody beating him for at least the next 18 months. Well, Leo Santa Cruz believes that Saul Alvarez needs to jump on Floyd Mayweather. He needs to impose himself on Floyd Mayweather. But you need to understand who Leo Santa Cruz is. He has great stamina. He has some of the best stamina in the sport of boxing. Leo Santa Cruz can come out and he can say, okay, I'm going to jump on this guy. And then he can throw punches for three minutes. Right? Leo Santa Cruz isn't a guy who needs to take off 90 seconds of every round. I don't think Saul Alvarez can follow a Leo Santa Cruz blueprint. Right? Leo Santa Cruz against Floyd Mayweather probably is in there throwing punches for three minutes. Saul Alvarez can't pace himself that way. If he tries, he better knock Floyd out. Because if he doesn't, he's going to be spent. And he's going to be finished. And he's going to find himself on the canvas. I think the problem with the scenario of Saul Alvarez coming in and jumping on a smaller man is that he doesn't have the stamina to pull it off, right? Now, let me say this. Let's talk about the Austin Trout fight, because quite frankly, 
that was a major fight in Canelo's background. Understand that Austin Trout in that fight, and this is not my opinion, this is the CompuBox numbers, lands twice as many jabs as Saul Alvarez. Right? If you thought Alvarez was the jabber in that fight, look at the CompuBox numbers. Now I know many of you after that fight talked about Trout's low connect rate. Would it surprise you to know that he had the same connect rate with the jab as Canelo while landing twice as many jabs as Canelo? Now, Austin Trout does a lot of things very well in the ring. But he doesn't move like Floyd Mayweather. So think it through. If Canelo is landing half the jabs of Austin Trout, who's more stationary than Floyd Mayweather, is he really going to break up Mayweather with his jab? Probably not. Probably not. Let's talk about Austin Trout and power punches. Trout's connect rate does disintegrate on the power punches. But understand volume-wise, Trout lands one less power punch in the fight than Saul Alvarez. Right? And so... Just ask yourself, how could a guy who lands twice as many jabs and one less power punch lose a unanimous decision? Well, I've said this before. I know it's upset a bunch of people. I had Trout winning that fight. I'll agree Canelo did much better than expected. Just understand that Showtime's Al Bernstein scored that fight 114-114, right? That fight was closer than the scorecards suggested. An argument can be made that Canelo won the fight. Certainly, Canelo scores the only knockdown of the fight, and the fight was close. Certainly, the fight was closer than Ray Beltran's demolition of Ricky Burns this last weekend. Right? No question about it. But, and it's troubling, even though Trout moves less than Floyd Mayweather, right? Contrast. Trout's movement against Canelo with Floyd Mayweather's movement against Robert Guerrero. Even though Trout moves less than Floyd Mayweather, Trout somehow limits Saul Alvarez to 431 punches thrown. Right? Alvarez's volume dipped radically against Austin Trout. 431 is very low volume against Floyd Mayweather as Floyd moves around the ring. Is Saul Alvarez going to throw enough punches to plausibly win the rounds on the judges' scorecards? I think it's a question. Let me go one step further. Trout at times tried to be the aggressor against Canelo. As I said earlier in this video, the story of that fight is Canelo's aptitude on his back foot. He looked good on his back foot, right? Is he going to be on his back foot against Floyd Mayweather? Isn't Floyd a counterpuncher who likes you to lead the dance, right? If Floyd gets Canelo moving on his front foot, couldn't that possibly be bad news for Canelo just like it was for Arturo Gotti when Floyd fought Gotti? Now let's talk about the troubling aspects for Floyd. And they're troubling. If you're a Mayweather fan or gambler, you need to think about these. Floyd has a notice of a lack of experience at 154 pounds. Right? Let's get real. Floyd has only fought two guys at 154 pounds. Two. Right? Miguel Cotto at 154 in May of 2012 and Oscar De La Hoya at 154 in May of 2007. Now both guys are left hand dominant guys who fought out of an orthodox stance. Both guys, right? Floyd hasn't fought a guy at 154 who's right-hand dominant, like Canelo. 
Let me go one step further. Hasn't Floyd been fighting a lot of left-hand dominant guys, right? Think, think it through. Robert Guerrero, Southpaw, that's the last fight. Victor Ortiz fights out of a Southpaw stance. That's the fight before Miguel Cotto. Now, I know many of you are going to say, well, wait a moment now. Floyd fought Shane Mosley. Understand. That fight was at 147. When Mosley fought Canelo, it was at 154. But the Shane Mosley Floyd fight was at 147. So understand, this is a new dynamic for Floyd at 154 pounds. If you're a gambler, you hate new dynamics. You want to bet on things that you've seen that you understand, that you can predict, right? Here, Floyd dealing with Canelo's right hand is an open question. Let me just say, Canelo has an excellent straight right hand. It's excellent. So just be aware, there is risk out there. There is something new. Understand, although Floyd has ruled the roost, for several years. Since he fought Oscar De La Hoya in May of 2007, Floyd Mayweather has only had six fights, right? And, you know, one of the six was against the guy fighting out of his weight class, Juan Manuel Marquez. Just food for thought, right? Many of the six, sizable number, I would say four of the six, I know it's controversial, were against guys who, in my opinion, were left-hand dominant. Without any evidence except my eyes, I'm guessing Ricky Hatton is left-hand dominant. Certainly he is in the ring. So, as with Andre Berto, when you look through his past, I'm guessing there must be a reason why Floyd Mayweather has stayed away from right-hand dominant guys at 154 pounds. So this fight does have some intrigue. The way I see the fight is that Canelo has a window, right, of the first, let's say, three rounds of the fight in which to hurt Mayweather badly. Counterpunchers are safe crackers. It takes them a while to figure out the combination. Canelo needs to come out. He needs to land quality shots early before Floyd figures out the angles. He also needs to throw in feints. He needs to hide what he's doing. Right? That's the way I see it. He may want to lead with straight right hands. Why? Because Floyd doesn't have a lot of experience at 154 against guys who lead with straight right hands. Right? After the third round, we can even push it back one round. After the fourth round, if Canelo hasn't appreciably hurt Floyd Mayweather, this fight is over. If Canelo is remotely winded, he might get stopped. Understand, too, if you see a start like the Mayweather-Ortiz start, where Mayweather wins all of those early rounds, as far as I'm concerned, this fight is over. Right? What you also need to do is to watch Mayweather's hands, right? I believe the biggest threat to Floyd Mayweather is not Saul Alvarez. I believe it's the idea that he can hurt his hands. It's happened in other fights. They mention it on all access and not be able to dig down deep in the pocket to dole out the punishment, right? Mayweather needs his hands in this one. If he hurts his hands, he could be in trouble. I don't think he will be. I like Floyd Mayweather big in this one. I think Canelo could get stopped in the middle of this fight because of the speed difference and skill difference between the fighters. Right? The bet I like is Mayweather to win, hedged with the under 11 and a half rounds, which Crazily, the casinos are offering at better than even money odds. I believe Canelo's only chance in this fight is to win by knockout. You actually get that with the hedge. 
right? Because if either fighter wins by knockout in the first 11 and a half, you win the hedge. If Floyd Mayweather wins by knockout in the first 11 and a half rounds of this fight, you win both sides of the bet. I don't think on the scorecards, even with the politics of the sport of boxing, I don't think on the scorecards this fight's going to be close. I like Mayweather. Oh, five days before the fight takes off. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and on Roku at Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Thanks for stopping by.